Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You're watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Wednesday, the 14th of February. PM Modi addresses World Government Summit, inaugurates Abu Dhabi's first Hindu temple. Shehbaz Sharif to be candidate for Pakistan's PM, Zardari calls for reconciliation. And Sri Lanka's general election to be held in 2025 says President's office. And now for all the details. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Wednesday addressed the World Government Summit during his official visit to the UAE and inaugurated the first Hindu temple in Abu Dhabi. The Prime Minister called the move as landmark and an example of UAE's affinity towards India. Take a look. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Wednesday while addressing the World Government Summit in Dubai said that world today needs governments which are inclusive and free from corruption. PM Modi said in the last few years in India, people's trust in his government has increased. He also expressed gratitude towards UAE President Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan and said he is not only a leader of vision but also the leader of resolve and commitment. On Wednesday, the Indian Prime Minister also met his UAE counterpart, Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum and discussed a wide range of areas of bilateral cooperation, including trade and investment. Later in the day, he inaugurated the BAPS Hindu Temple in Abu Dhabi, the first traditional stone-carved Hindu temple in the Middle East. BAPS represents a socio-spiritual Hindu faith rooted in the Vedas, pioneered by Bhagwan Swami Narayan in the late 18th century. The proposal of the temple came during the first visit of PM Modi to the UAE in 2015 after which the government allocated land for the Grand Temple. About 3.5 million strong and vibrant Indian community forms the largest expatriate group in the UAE. And moments after protesting farmers resumed their Delhi Chalo march on Wednesday, chaos erupted as police fired tear gas shells on the crowd. The farmers travelling on trucks and trolleys loaded with food, bedding and other supplies began marching towards Delhi on Tuesday morning after talks between their unions and the government failed to yield a commitment regarding minimum prices for a range of crops. Agitated farmers say that the government has failed to fulfill its 2021 promise of paying more for crops. <laughs> जो अपने जवान हैं उनसे लड़ने भिड़ने के लिए नहीं आए हुए हम अपनी बात के लिए आए हैं भी हमें एमएसपी खरीद की गारंटी का कानून बनाइए द लेटेस्ट प्रोटेस्ट कम विद द कंट्री मंथ्स अवे फ्रॉम अ नेशनल इलेक्शन वेयर पीएम मोदी विल सी का थर्ड टर्म अ ईयर लॉन्ग प्रोटेस्ट इन 2021 बाय फार्मर्स अ पावरफुल वोटिंग ब्लॉक हैड पुश द गवर्नमेंट टू रिपील सम फार्म लॉज एंड प्रॉमिस टू फाइंड वेज टू इंश्योर सपोर्ट प्राइजेस फॉर ऑल फार्म प्रोड्यूस मूविंग ऑन एंडिंग डेज ऑफ अनसर्टेनिटी आफ्टर लास्ट वीक्स इलेक्शंस रिटर्न अ हंग पार्लियामेंट फॉर्मर प्राइम मिनिस्टर शहबाज शरीफ इज मेड नॉमिनी फॉर नेक्स्ट प्रेमियर फॉर अ न्यू कोएलेशन गवर्नमेंट Informing about the development, PMLN spokesperson Maryam Aurangzeb said Shehbaz was nominated for the top office by party supremo Nawaz Sharif, whom many believed was the front runner for premiership ahead of the elections. PMLN, which is the largest recognized party with 80 seats, is being supported by Bilawal Bhutto Zardari's PPP, which came second with 54 seats. Together, the two parties have enough for a simple majority in the 264-seat legislature. The PPP chair, Menasif Ali Zardari, has however also called for political reconciliation, asking Imran Khan's PTI to be a part of the process. While the new alliance has ended uncertainty for now, political analysts believe the coalition government is destined to fail. We are literally are broke, bankrupt. And uh, we borrow everything. We borrow to pay our soldiers their monthly salary. We borrow to pay our peons uh, our, our, uh, the monthly salary. Uh, so, if that situation has to be corrected, a lot of savings have to be done. 
a lot of good planning has to take place and I don't think that the government which six months ago is respond this the very opposition that is now in power was in power six months ago and I don't think they can handle the situation. Meanwhile, locals and traders in POK have expressed anger over the issue of severe load shedding and inflated power bills that the Pakistani authorities have refused to address. A report. The issue of severe load shedding and inflated power bills has been affecting all sections of society in Pakistan-occupied Kashmir. People are irked as they are forced to pay high price for merely hours worth of electricity. They say it is injustice that even after generating thousands of megawatts of electricity through hydropower projects in the region, they are made to suffer. तो कहने का मतलब यह है कि आई रोज जो हमारे इश्यूज होते हैं कभी हम बिल नहीं जमा कराते कभी हम और मुख्तलिफ किस्म के जो इश्यूज उठाते हैं इनको एड्रेस करने की जरूरत है इंतहाई संजीदगी के साथ क्योंकि हम यहाँ एक एहसास खत्े में रह रहे हैं आज़ाद कश्मीर के लोग जो है एहसास हैं इन लोगों के पास जो है कोई फैक्ट्रियाँ नहीं हैं कोई रोजी रोटी का मासवा कारोबार छोटे मोटे करने के कोई और ऑप्शन और जरिया नहीं है There have been several protests in recent months but authorities have kept on neglecting these issues. Locals believe they are being forced to bear the brunt of Pakistan's failed economic policies and there is no relief in sight in near future. And reiterating that US policy towards Taliban administration in Afghanistan has not changed. Coordinator for Strategic Communications at the National Security Council in the White House John Kirby said the de facto authorities need to meet their own commitments to get recognition. Addressing a query over Afghanistan, Kirby said if Taliban wants to be seen as legitimate rulers, they need to adhere to commitments that they said they would meet. Taliban spokesperson Zabiullah Mujahid in response said Kabul is committed to its pledges made with the international community and asked Washington to engage with Afghanistan. While China has established diplomatic relations with Kabul, no country so far has officially recognized Taliban regime as legitimate. Moving on, Sri Lanka will go to polls in 2025, President Ranil Vikramasinghe's office announced on Tuesday. In a statement, President's media division said, as per the scheduled general election will be held next year, while the presidential polls will be held within the mandated period. Accordingly, financial provisions for the general election will be provided for in the 2025 budget, the statement said. Notably, the opposition has been asking the government to hold elections in the current year. However, local media reports suggest Election Commission of Sri Lanka has said election cannot be held this year due to non-allocation of funds. Hundreds of couples from across the world visited the Taj Mahal, the famed monument of love in India's Agra city, to mark the Valentine's Day. The Mughal era monument was built by Emperor Shah Jahan as a testament to his love for his wife, Mumtaz Mahal. Historians say it took around 20,000 workers over 22 years to build the Taj Mahal. Celebrating this date exactly here in Agra near uh, this uh, treasure Taj Mahal peril of uh, India. Meanwhile, members of hardline Hindu group Bajrang Dal held a demonstration against Valentine's Day in Hyderabad city and called on people to instead remember the martyrs of 2019 Pulwama terror attack. They call Valentine's Day is immoral and a corruption of the country's ancient civilization. और एक बात क्या है बोले तो अपना संस्कृति और कल्चर को पूरा डाइवर्ट करने में थोड़े विदेशी उन लोग अपने यूथ पे थोड़ा वेस्टर्न कल्चर वो लगाने के प्रयास कर रहे हैं वो हम चेतावनी दिए थे लास्ट दो दिन के पहले भी हम लोग का वैलेंटाइन के नाम पे कुछ भी नहीं करना Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.